this ramble might be a bit of a mixture because I just keep having these things pop into my head. Um, I, I've thought of my first encounters with racism when I was a small child. Um, my <laughs> The way that I ended up quitting Pizza Hut and going to, uh, to actually do computer work full time. And uh, there was something else that as I've just spaced out on, but this might be a variety show of a ramble today. My first, uh, well, I should just go over a brief history of my history with racism and bullying in school. Now, for the most part, I would like to say that um, obviously being a white kid in a majority white area or set of areas, uh, racism was not a major problem for me growing up. But it did exist, and uh, even then, it turns out <laughs> I have I have proof, personal, firsthand proof, that black people are more racist than white people, um, based on my actual experience. <laughs> and yeah, maybe it's a sample size of one or two or three or four or five, but um, yeah, you'll see. So. Going back very far, um, I was in kindergarten. Um, this was actually in a fairly progressive city in like uh, the 80s or early 90s, you know, just that time frame. Uh, I'm going to say late 80s just because we have to anchor it somewhere. But <clears throat> late 80s, I'm on the, I'm on the bus. And I don't remember any of the circumstances, but I'm a kindergarten kid. And I don't know, some, some kids are hurling little insults. Maybe maybe I was in first grade, but it, it was one of those very early grades where, you know, it's just younger than my kids now. <laughs> so not very, very developed. But we're talking five or six years old, bottom line. Five or six year olds. And... I don't remember what catalyzed me hurling an insult, but it, there was a black boy who was um, being rowdy, insulting people, I believe, and uh, for some reason I chimed in and called him Blackie Butt. Because when you're a kid, the only thing you can really latch on to is what you can observe. Um, it, it, frankly, is probably the most pitiful insult imaginable. Um, God, I mean, just like, <laughs> talk about autism <laughs> at five. But I called this kid Blackie Butt because I didn't know, I didn't know racism. This is like, oh, you know, you're different, so I'm going to pick on your difference because that's what kids do when they pick on each other. Now, what would you expect a five or six year old black kid being called Blackie Butt by a five or six year old white kid to do? You'd probably expect, like, whitey butt or, you know, something alluding to the paleness of the skin. Now, I want you to keep in mind, we're talking five or six years old. We're talking a level of intellectual development where you're exploring things linguistically. You don't even know what you're saying half the time. You mimic what you hear or, you know, if you try to come up with something, it's usually really, really um, absurd, like Blackie Butt. So, of all the options, this child calls me, child me, same grade, whatever, Cracker. Yeah, so um, I have never had any kind of education about racism in any way. One way or the other, I'm like five years old. I'm in kindergarten. I don't know anything about racism. I'm going to brighten this up real quick. It's going to look bad in post, but that's okay. So I don't know anything about racism, but this kid already knows to call white people cracker at the age of five. That's not good. That's especially not good considering it was a uh, pretty left-wing place I was living in at the time. It's very very progressive, trust me on that. This is quite, quite a large gay community, 
It just bottom line, very progressive area. Um, I hurl a stupid insult that barely qualifies as race based. And this kid already knows advanced racism insults to throw back. So uh, nothing came of it. That was basically the end of that. I was, um, I was actually really confused. I didn't, I didn't tell anyone what happened. This is actually the first time I've ever discussed it, but, um, I, I didn't, I didn't know what, what was going on. I thought that the kid was stupid. I didn't realize, and this is the beauty of insults. For an insult to work, it has to land properly. Uh, and if I don't know what that word means, it doesn't insult me. I was like, that's food you eat. Like, what kind of an insult is that? Like, you know, I, I, I used the word but, and I said something about the way he looked. And this kid just called me a, a food, a tasty food, no less. I always loved Ritz crackers, so calling me a cracker was more of a compliment than an insult in my book back when I was five. So that, that was the first memory I have of dabbling in the racism pond. <laughs> it's so hard for me to go on beyond that, really. It's just, I think about it, and it's just, it makes everything else just seem so much more nasty in comparison, but how, how do you move on from that, man? It's just like, the, the disconnects are so funny. So, moving on from that, uh, the next thing that I remember, same city, uh, different person. This time it was a black girl. You'll notice that, that so far, no white kids have bullied me yet. It was a black girl. It was, oh God, what grade was it? I think it was second grade. Yeah, it was second grade. So we're talking, I don't know, in the 1990. 91, 92. I, I don't remember exactly when that was, but we're talking early 90s probably, second grade. A black girl, for no apparent reason whatsoever, not in my class, just some black girl, and I don't remember all the details of how the whole school thing was um, organized, but some time period that all the kids would be out on the blacktop, I think they called it the blacktop, because it was paved with asphalt. Um, it, was, it was not a parking lot, it was just a big blacktop. Think of it almost like a gymnasium except outdoors and it's just paved with asphalt. There was some circumstance under which all the kids would just be standing around outside for a while. I think it was before class or uh, it was like some sort of morning break, like some kind of morning recess sort of thing. I don't remember. Two or three times this black girl of the same general age, maybe a gray hire, I don't remember, but um, roughly, roughly the same age as me, roughly the same size. I don't know what I did. I don't know why, but she just decided that she was going to harass me. Um, she would threaten me, not like, not like in that sinister adult way, not like Hannibal Lecter or whatever, but just like she would behave in a way. And remember, I was a kid, so I don't remember things very clearly. I only remember the vague overtones of how things went. But she always had a, a smile about it. She thought it was fun to make me feel like she was going to harm me and she would chase me. She would make me run. Standard second grade bullying behavior. And uh, I got real fucking sick of it. Like, I, got, I got pretty tired of doing this after a few times. And one day um, she like told me to run or whatever. I don't remember the details. Again, this is just me trying to piece together what happened loosely from my memories. That day, I was I was real tired of it. I didn't, <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't really like running around like that in the first place, and especially someone forcing me to do so under threat. I was tired of it, and I was like, no, I'm not going to run. <laughs> no, you're not going to make me. No, no. And she uh, started making contact with me. I don't remember exactly. Could have been, you know, arms or whatever. And I got tired of it. So I started hitting her and she started hitting me. And it probably lasted for 15 or 20 seconds. It was only just, you know, just probably, it, it, it's like the friggin' second grade equivalent of slap fighting. Blows were exchanged 
And I'm not going to lie, I walked away from that crying. Because it fucking hurts to get in a real fight of any sort. Even if it's between second graders, you know, like, like, keep in mind, we're talking seven or eight years old here. We're not talking about, like, a bunch of teenagers. We're talking about kids that um, just barely are kids. I mean, <laughs> they haven't had that much time to even figure out how to behave this way. But yet, this girl was a bully for reasons that I never understood or knew. And the only way I got rid of her was to literally get in a fight with her. And uh, yeah, I got hurt. I'm sure she got hurt. But I can tell you one thing for a fact. That's the last memory that I have of that girl. I, I It was never seen by the teachers. It was over in this like um, stairs, um, this wide set of stairs that let you enter the actual gym. I don't, it, it wasn't easily visible to a teacher. In any case, no teachers actually saw it. And because of that, um, you know, nobody got in trouble. But uh, yeah, I, I had to hit this black girl that randomly decided I was a good victim at, in second grade. Nobody should be bullying anybody in second grade. If you're bullying someone in the second grade, you're a bad person already. Just at that age, you're, you're going to jail later. And I'm sure that girl is in some sort of horrible life situation right now if she hasn't died of a drug overdose or gang fight or something. Because if you're doing that kind of stuff in second grade, you're bad news. So moving along, the next thing I remember in terms of... Uh, I, I don't have much more in the way of racism. Uh, and I don't know that the race had anything to do with it. I just, I remember that characteristic because, like, now I've had two different black people pick on me in some way uh, or argue or fight with me, and, and I'm only in second grade. Now, um, a few years later, I moved away from that place and went to a much more rural area. Um, the, the the entire, I mean, it wasn't in a, in, in a sort of a small city. It was more of a town thing much more uh, widely spaced stuff, just less of the urban nonsense around. And I think, if I'm really thinking hard about it, the next bully, eh, bully, uh, the next incident, I don't even know if you'd call it a bully, um, I, I, was, uh, I was going to the middle school, I was in sixth grade, so we're talking 11-ish years old, but... This bus also, I believe, went to the high school. So it was like a bus that was shared between the two schools. Like it would go on one route and pick up kids for both and drop the high school kids off first and then go to the middle school second. Something like that. Um, but it, it was a shared bus. So this is like ninth grade girl. Um, I don't remember what led up to it, but she got all pissy with me. And the thing that set her off was um, I called her mom a snowblower. A snowblower. She thought that 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 was a good it would be a good idea to come over to my seat and then try to grab my collar and you know do the thing, whatever you know, threaten, intimidate, bully me. Um, when she did this, I proceeded to take my hands, grab her arms, and claw my fingernails into them as hard as I could. Um, she slapped me twice before letting go because I dug my fingernails into her. Well, bitch, if you hadn't done that to me, then you wouldn't have giant fingernail gashes in your fucking arms. And I hope she's rotting in a jail cell somewhere today, too. Um, because I don't have any faith that someone who would go off the handle that easily and get violent is not going to stay that way. People have a tendency to stay that way when they're violent like that. But I don't remember her name or anything. I do remember that she was several years beyond me, and everyone basically treated it like, why are you picking on a sixth grader, high school girl? You should know better. Mm, yeah, anyway, that, that was just one incident. Um, you probably are also sensing a theme here. If you back me into a corner, I'm going to fucking hurt you. So, let's see. After that... You know what? I missed one. I actually missed one. Um, 
No, I didn't miss one. That was that was the before I went to the other school. So went to this other school. These two kids, um, they kind of hung out together, and I remember their names. One of them was Tim Johnson. The other one was Josh Newnham. Both of these kids hung out together, and the problem was that they thought it was fun to screw with me. This kind of culminated one day when I was in the cafeteria eating my lunch, and they sat behind, now imagine round tables at lunch, and they sat at the table like to the back of me, but their two chairs are flanking the back of me. They kept on reaching over and messing with me. So Tim Johnson and Josh Newnham sat behind me and screwed with me one day. Now they keep in mind, they've been doing minor stuff like trying to write fake, um, really poorly faked, uh, you know, notes from like the new girl at school or whatever saying that I want to lick you up and down and you know, just stuff like that trying to trick me. Well, these two are reaching over and screwing with me, like physically, you know, poking me, mildly hitting me, whatever, at lunch. They're sitting behind me on purpose so that they can reach back and do this and laugh at me. Well, they do it enough times and I get pissed off enough times that I stand up very quickly and push them back. Um, so you can imagine I'm sitting in a chair, I stand up very fast, and the action of me standing up pushes my chair backwards, and I, and I reach around and push them, and I'm ready to confront them. Some teacher immediately rushes over. Now, I was listening to a video, um, listening to a video, one of those uh, like Reddit story type things where they talk about what's the worst thing you've gotten in trouble for at school, and that's actually what inspired this, um, this discussion. So the worst thing I've gotten in trouble for at school was fighting these two little pieces of shit. And the thing is, I didn't fight anybody. I stood up quickly and pushed their hands away, but I didn't hit anyone. They were fucking with me. So the school suspends all three of us for a week. And I tell them repeatedly that I didn't do a damn thing. They kept reaching back and messing with me and reaching back and messing with me. While I was trying to eat lunch and I got tired of them doing it, they weren't stopping. And that I didn't hit anyone, I didn't fight with anyone, but I wasn't just gonna let them keep on messing with me. So I got in trouble for not allowing them to continue to screw with me. And I don't remember the teachers involved, and chances are pretty good they'd never remember it either, but it's not the kind of thing you just forget. And I hope that all of the people who were behind the decision to suspend me for a week, and of course, my parents, being the unreasonable turds that they were, um, gave me a bunch of shit for getting suspended, because, oh, now we have to work, now now our, our work schedule or whatever is interrupted, and nah, 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 nah. They didn't give a shit about the fact that I didn't do anything wrong. Um, and yeah, so just imagine, you, you think I have a, a distrust of authority for no reason? You think I have a persecution complex for no reason? No. There were multiple instances growing up where authority figures lied to me, didn't listen to me, just all kinds of stuff like that. And yeah, I might have a problem with that. So yeah, I was, I was suspended from school for a week and I was pissed off really bad. And I hope all of the people who were responsible for that decision are suffering horribly today because they're bad people for making decisions like that. I do not care if there was like a, a countywide policy or whatever, all of you can burn in hell. Um, another one actually comes from my deceased father. Uh, there was an incident. Uh, see, now being autistic, I sometimes don't present things correctly or understand them correctly, whatever. There was a, there was a time, this is around the same time too. Um, there was a time where um, they asked me what I wanted to do and I don't remember in relation to what. And I, and I put my hand on my head and I was like, hmm, what do I want to do out loud? They thought I was uh, just 
like blatantly, uh, brazenly mocking them for asking me the question, and they gave me a really nasty spanking. That's right. That's right. My dad was beating me when I was 12. So, yeah, or 11, or whatever. Yeah, it's just, that kind of shit is not acceptable. Um, and I never forgave him for that behavior. But I didn't mean anything by it. I was trying to be funny. And I got beaten for it. So that didn't go over very well. Um, let's see, what else happened? You know, now that I'm thinking about it, um, oh yeah, there's one more, one more instance of bad behavior, and we go back to the racial differences on this one. Uh, when I was in high school, so we've moved on, we're, we're now talking like 11th or 12th grade. I should clarify, <coughs> Columbine had happened, uh, the trench coat mafia. So I actually got a leather trench coat that I wore all the time, uh, which was, is a really sweet coat, man. I, just, I wish I still had it. Well, I wish I still fit in it. Um, but I had a leather trench coat that I wore all the time, and it was really just a thing because my stepmother thought it was a good idea to go look through literally everything in my room, every page of everything that I had lying around, basically just did a thorough search of all my shit, and saying, like, Columbine's a wake-up call. Um, actually, because of her doing that, I um, went out to the internet and downloaded the Anarchist Cookbook and um, I, I basically read everything I could about how to make bombs and uh, you know, just pretty much every kind of mischief you can imagine. I looked it up because you know what? If you're going to punish me for doing nothing wrong because some idiots in Colorado shot a bunch of people, then I'm going to do everything I can to defy you. So I learned all kinds of crazy stuff about chemistry and bombs and bomb construct, whatever. Um, and I got a leather trench coat. Uh, it's sort of my rebellion. Just, I'll wear a leather trench coat everywhere, you know? It also helped because now that that was the thing um, in the back of people's minds, me wearing a leather trench coat invoked the images of that, so it made a lot of people a lot more hesitant to screw with me, even though I was really just wearing it because I wanted to rebel and I actually liked the coat. Also, The Matrix had been out for a couple of years, and I loved that movie. <clears throat> so, you get the idea. Anyway, um, you can imagine all the ways, <laughs> and I have imagined all the ways that this could go wrong as an adult, right? Like, <laughs> you, but as a kid, you don't give a shit. It's like, this is the way I rebel. Well. I had had plenty of interaction with the office staff because I frequented the, the guidance counselor's office. And, you know, I talked to the principal more than your average kid, not because I was in trouble all the time, but just because <clears throat> I tried to be, um, I tried to make connections if I could, even though I had some social learning disabilities. Um, I tried to be nice and it was frequently misunderstood or whatever. So I wasn't some unknown to the principal, but it wasn't because I was bad. Um, anyway, I get called to the principal's office one day. And I go in, and I'm at lunch. And I get called to the principal's office, and I go in there. And there are three black boys, males, teens. They, they're teens. They're on the way to being men. So boys is not a correct way to characterize them. We're in high school. Three of my black male peers in the principal's office. All three of them t apparently went to the principal's office and told the principal that I said I was going to blow up the school. What do you say to that? You're standing in the principal's office in a black trench coat and there's three other kids saying they heard you say you were gonna blow up the school. I kinda just started laughing because what, what the hell else was I gonna do? You know, it's such a stupid thing. I knew I didn't say it. I didn't understand why they had made this complete lie up. I don't know if someone else said I was going to do it or if they thought it'd be a funny prank or what. But ultimately, <clears throat> um, I, since I hadn't done it and it was ridiculous 
And I was like, wow, I'm in, I'm in here because of that? Because these idiots say that? And they're wrong? I laugh. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what it is that they think they heard or what they're talking about. But no. That's stupid. Why would I do that? That's dumb. And, you know, I like I said, I had talked to the principal several times just outside of needing to go to his office. So he knew that I wasn't some kind of frigging crazy guy that was like a brooding and going to blow up the school. But I guess he had no choice but to call me in and ask. It was really strange to me because it's three black males saying this about me. Why? Why is that? Why? Like, okay, let's analyze all of this. Um, a white female attacked me on the bus. Uh, my dad is a white male, but that wasn't in school. And two white males attacked me, well, messed with me at lunch. When I was really young and when I was in high school, why are, and, and keep in mind, in all of these areas, it's by far majority white. We're talking over 70%, way over 70% white. Um, why is it? Why is there such a disproportionate number of black people um, coming after me? The first, the, the, the kid in, in kindergarten, him responding, that was obviously I provoked that. Um, I didn't provoke him to use an actual adult racial slur back at me, but, um, but whatever. That one's sort of a wash, but what's up with the black girl attacking me? What's up with the three black boys randomly accusing me of threatening to blow up the school when I don't even know who they are? It's like, it's really bizarre to me. It's like, at least the white people just attacked me. Why? Why, why is it like this? And it, to this day, I don't understand. And maybe it's just a coincidence. Maybe I just haven't gotten my ass beaten enough to have a nice sampling of the people that want to harm me. But it, it was bizarre to me, and I, I'll never understand it. I just, I'll, I'll just never understand it. Oh yeah, you know what? Here's a bonus one. I actually thought of another one, a white male. So I try to be nice to everybody. Well, there's this girl, I knew her name. I said hi to her in the hallway and her stupid ass tall boyfriend comes up and does the, the, the posturing thing where he puts his arms out really wide and you know, acting like he's gonna beat my ass if I talk to his girlfriend. It's like, all I did was say hi to her. Um, I'm glad in retrospect that I just let him be a dick and then walk away, but also, in retrospect, what I really wish I would have done is kneed him in the fucking balls and walked away. Because that, that kind of, you know, peacocking bullshit deserves a, a knee to the nut. Anyway, but that wasn't really bullying. That was like intimidation, and it, it was just stupid high school crap you expect from a jock. Oh, well, I shouldn't have talked to a cheerleader. Oops. Man, dumb high school drama crap. It, I didn't get hit or anything. It was barely threatening, really. It just got all up in my face, but that's it. Um, so that's that's basically my history up through high school of racism and bullying. Um, needless to say, between my dad being... I mean, honestly, my dad was probably a worse bully because um, his dad was worse to him and so on and so forth, but, you know, I, I got my ass beat up through, like, fucking 10th grade. I'm just, yeah, it was bad, and I'll leave it at that. I didn't, like, get bloody or anything, but I'll tell you right now, getting hit with a with a flexible piece of, uh, flexible stick from a tree is, leaving welts is not exactly pleasant, and, uh, yeah, anyway, I don't want to go into the, all that, but my dad was the worst bully of all of them, if you really just want to get down to it. He thought he was doing the right thing, but he wasn't. And yeah, so the other ones really kind of paled in comparison to the crap he gave me. But when I became an adult, I immediately moved out, you know, right after I turned 18, and, and that was the end of that. And uh, we made up after I didn't talk to him for four months. Uh, so anyway, that's that. Now, Moving on from people giving me crap and uh, you now knowing why it is that if anybody backs me into a corner at this point, I am more than happy to give them a bloody nose and some exploded testicles. The other thing that I want to talk about is what happened to make me stop working at Pizza Hut and start doing computer work full time. Back in the 
I want to say 04, 05, mid 2000s. Craigslist was way better than it is now. Craigslist was not well known, so not a ton of people posted to it. As you know, in 2024, when I'm filming this, um, a lot of people flocking to something ruins it. So Craigslist was not there. It was popular in San Francisco and it had gone nationwide, but in the Raleigh-Durham area, not a ton of people were using it. It was still sort of an open secret at that point. A lot of people didn't know about it. And I had posted some ads there and managed to actually get some on-site computer help work. I charged way too little, but I built a business out of it. I actually got a lot of customers that way and sort of, I got to the point I actually had to have like a work phone at one point, but anyway, I built a computer business by posting ads on Craigslist for my services. And um, while, you know, while doing so, I was also working at Pizza Hut. I worked at Pizza Hut for like four years. <clears throat> Frankly, being a pizza delivery driver back in the early to mid-2000s was a pretty sweet gig. Uh, that, that, that gas price spike punched me pretty hard. But other than that, um, you know, it was a pretty easy job. I mean, I got to sit in my car most of the night listening to the radio uh, or music and giving people pizza and getting cash tips and all that. So it was a pretty sweet gig. Um, you get tired of it like you get tired of anything. But I loved delivering pizza until I kind of didn't. And it really did all kind of come down to management. So I worked at, I actually, the same company owned like five or six different pizza huts near each other. So I bounced between them. I actually could sign in at other pizza huts and help them out. And I'd pick up extra shifts at other ones and help them out. So I worked at a total, I think, of three or four different ones. Yes, four. There were, there were four different ones that I worked at. So anyway, um, I was working at Pizza Hut. I was building my computer business. A lot of those pictures that you may have seen me throw into videos or whatever of a bunch of really, really old looking beige computers in a closet, that's from when I was doing that. So one day, um, the manager of the Pizza Hut I, I'm primarily at and I'm very happy with, he, he leaves to do something else with his life and everybody's like, oh, we're so sad to see you go. We throw him a little party. His drunk brother becomes the manager of the store. And I'll make this short because I don't have a lot more time to um, tell you about this, but his drunk brother becomes the manager and the, um, I was down to two days a week because I had so much computer business. When he became the manager, he did not even ask why I was only scheduled two days a week on the schedule. He scheduled me for like six days, five or six days. Uh, it was a lot compared to the two. And I relied on the two days that I was set scheduled. I relied on the timing and the lack of hours at Pizza Hut to do my computer service work. And I made decent money even you know, relative to the pizza stuff, I was making like, I was charging like 40 bucks an hour to go out to places, which is piss cheap. I'd never do that again. But I was charging 40 bucks an hour to go these places, and I, I would sometimes come back with 200 bucks a day, whereas the pizza trade, I might get 30. 35, yeah, 30 to 40 was typical, um, a typical tip night. So I made so much more money doing my own independent computer repair stuff. Well, this guy comes in, schedules me for a ton of days. And I'm already pissed off about it. Um, but right before he made this new schedule, something came up. I don't remember what, but it was important. And I went to the back. He was on the computer po poking through employee records or something. I walked up to him. So imagine he's sitting at the counter, right? And I'm, um, he's sitting at this back counter poking at the computer. And I walk up to his left and I start talking. Now, he never looks at me or acknowledges me, but I start talking. There's no way he can't hear me. No way. There's absolutely no way. I've gotten up in his shit, and I'm talking to him. And after I'm done saying this thing that he needs to know about because it's something important that affects his store, I get no acknowledgement whatsoever. He doesn't look at me. He doesn't talk to me. It's as if I didn't exist. And I just stand there for a few more seconds and I'm like, you know what? 
you know what? You know what? If that's the way it's going to be, <laughs> if if you're if you're going to pretend like I don't exist when I'm talking to you about something important, I'm trying to communicate something about your store. I'm not going to deal with it. So I just walk away. That pissed me off. And I was like, I'm not going to help this guy. If this is really, if he's really going to disrespect me, it's pretty fundamentally disrespectful for him to treat me that way. But if he's going to be that way, I'm not going to help him anymore. Screw him. I'm just going to do my job. Then that schedule comes out and I'm pissed. Nobody talked to me, you know, and I know I can't talk to him because of that incident. So what I end up doing is I, <clears throat> I tell everybody that I work with that I am not going to be coming back as of Friday, I'm out. And I tell them I'm not going to give any notice or tell anyone that I won't be here Friday, that Friday is the day that I won't show up and I will never come back. And I make good on what I said. I do not show up and I do not come back because I was making too much money from computer work and I was not going to let this guy and his garbage scheduling ruin it. You know, why would I ditch the, the thing that makes me a lot of money for his stupid restaurant? Especially when he won't even listen to me and he probably wouldn't change the schedule if I told him I, that he had to. Well, I found out later that he actually drove to another Pizza Hut. This, this is how stupid this drunk ass guy was. He drove to another store that he knew I had done work at trying to find me because it was a very busy night and I didn't show up. Think about that for a second. This guy's the manager. I don't show up and he goes to another store. He doesn't take deliveries himself. He goes, he leaves his store that's very busy to go look for me. I'm so glad I left that place. I'm so glad I haven't had to work in any kind of retail customer service crap like that ever again, ever since. Never been a thing. I'm so glad I left. And I don't ever plan on going back to that crap. Everybody should have to work a job like that just so they have a baseline for how crappy things can be. Anyway, that's enough for me. I've got stuff to go do. I have a long night ahead. So thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that crap. Take care. The first thing that I want to talk about, because it'll probably be pretty short, is uh, my my history in school. Oh, I didn't put the padding on the camera. Hang on a second. <laughs> so I shoved this set of gloves up in the camera um, to pad it out so that it doesn't vibrate when I drive. And unfortunately, I forgot. And so now... I have to try to do it in real time and it's not easy so um, yeah I definitely need to edit this and put that in the blooper reel not in the main body hey Jody hey editing Jody do you hear me fix it oh this guy behind me is a little spicy too isn't he that's uh, not giving much to work with what do you say It's not perfect, but it'll get the job done. Okay. <sighs> that cut was because of bloopers. So, I don't like how close this car is behind me. I think I'm gonna force them to pass. Ooh, they're not gonna do it. Ooh, spicy move, boy. Yeah. Yeah, you get the fuck out from behind me, you weirdo. So anyway, one more for the blooper reel.